I'm presenting a model for melanoma diagnosis by the level of diagnostic difficulty. This is part two of a two lecture series. Welcome back. There are three levels of difficulty in melanoma diagnosis. Those that are easy and obvious from scanning magnification. Those that are medium difficulty and become apparent as melanomas on close inspection and those that are morph morphologically difficult to diagnose and require data integration. In the first part, I discuss doorway melanomas, melanomas that are morphologically straightforward. Here's an example. This melanoma is an obvious ugly duckling and shows multiple ABCD criteria. I also discussed melanomas that from scanning magnification are less apparent, such as this melanoma, but the closer we get, clinically and dermoscopically, the more criteria we see for melanoma. In this part, I would like to discuss melanomas that are morph morphologically difficult and require data integration for diagnosis. These would be melanomas that look from scan, like this. The following melanomas are difficult to diagnose. Facial, acral, and small diameter melanoma, as well as nevoid, amelanotic, and nodular melanoma. Why are some melanomas difficult to diagnose? Some melanomas fail to display the ABCD criteria, sometimes even masquerading as non-melanocytic lesions such as dermatofibroma or pyogenic granuloma. Here's an example of such a melanoma, amelanotic and nodular. Facial melanomas are also often difficult to diagnose, showing very few criteria clinically and neuroscopically for the classic melanoma. To diagnose such cell melanomas, we need to seek and integrate multiple findings from the patient history, risk factors of melanoma, patient concern of any specific lesions, ugly duckling, even a subtle deviant from the patient pattern, any criteria of concern on close-up and dermoscopic examination, and sometimes we use ancillary tests such as total body photography and confocal microscopy. When do I suspect a subtle melanoma? One, the lesion is a singular lesion. Clinically or dermoscopically, it's an ugly duckling. I know the patient other lesions look exactly like it. Two, the lesion does not display a classic pattern for any specific benign diagnosis. Or three, something doesn't fit. There's a mismatch between the finding. It could be the wrong lesion for the patient's age, skin type, or anatomic location. There could be a mismatch between the clinical and dermoscopic findings. There could be subtle clues for melanoma clinically or dermoscopically, or there could be a history of new or changing lesion or other patient concern. Let's review a few cases that exemplify this process. This is a 55-year-old man without prior history of melanoma. Do you see an obvious ugly duckling on the back, or do you see any deviant lesion? Let's focus on this area. There is a singular lesion. It's this red papule. None of the patient's back lesions or other body lesions looked exactly like it. It would be this type of ugly duckling. Here it is clinically. It's ABCD negative. It could be a red vascular lesion, but then I would expect it to display this dermoscopic pattern from hangioma. However, this lesion looked like this under endoscopy. It's not classic for any benign diagnosis. And there were also there was a clinical dermoscopic mismatch from what I expected. And there are clues for melanomas here. These would be crystalline structures and dotted vessels. Crystalline structures are shiny white orthogonal lines seen with polarized dermoscopy. They're seen in dermatic fibromas, basal cell carcinomas, spitz nevi, and melanoma. Among melanocytic neoplasms, the presence of chrysalis is highly suspicious for melanoma. Back to our patient. If I integrate the data, this is a singular lesion, clinically and dermoscopically, and it also displayed suspicious structures such as chrysalis and dotted vessels on dermoscopy. Therefore, this is a suspicious lesion for melanoma. 
Indeed, this was a nodular melanoma 0.65 mm in thickness. Let's review another case. Here's a 60-year-old patient without prior history of melanoma. There's no obvious ugly duckling on the patient's body. I looked dermoscopically at multiple lesions. Let's look at this lesion. Clinically, it's a 5 mm macule, flat, brown, ABCD negative. It looks like a nevus. I expect to see a reticular pattern on dermoscopy. However, this is what the, the, the patient's lesion looked like on dermoscopy, showing peripheral globules and streaks. It was a singular lesion on dermoscopy. None of the patient's other nevi looked like this. It reminded me of this nevus pattern, a growing Clark nevus, showing central reticulation and peripheral globules. However, these nevi are usually seen in younger patients and look like this, whereas the patient's lesion looked like this, not classic for the nevus pattern. It's also the wrong lesion for the patient's age. The patient is six years old and presents a melanoma-specific structure of streaks. When we reviewed the prevalence of peripheral globules in nevi, we saw this is a common finding in the first three decades of life, becoming less and less common until it becomes rare after the age of 50. Our patient is six years old, therefore it's unlikely to be seen. So to diagnose by integration, this is a six-year-old patient showing a growing lesion also with peripheral streaks, a melanoma-specific finding under dermoscopy. Therefore, this lesion is suspicious for melanoma. Indeed, this was a melanoma 0.5 mm in thickness. So in conclusion, these subtle melanomas can be missed if multiple clues are not integrated. Note lesions that are singular. None of the patient's other lesions look exactly like it. Lesions that are not classic for any benign diagnosis in pattern. And also, something doesn't fit. There is a mismatch between the criteria. Thank you for your attention. I would like to acknowledge the European Commission Marie Curie FP7 grant for supporting my research program. I would also like to thank Ms. Selinger, my research assistant, for helping me prepare this podcast.